Tools Plus for all your equipment. Tools Plus for all your quality shop equipment. Today we're going to be taking a look at a four post lift, how to uh, set it up, and how to make this thing work. This is your standard four post car lift. Uh, when you receive it, it's going to look like this. Probably come on the back of a semi, or if you picked it up, this is what we're going to be looking at. It's packaged about two feet wide, about 30 inches tall, and about 14 feet long. If you get the extra long one, it's going to be 16 feet long. Tools Plus for all of your quality shop equipment. In business since 1987. Here we are at the 7,000 pound four post lift getting ready for the assembly and let's take a look at what all you're getting in the package. You've got your two ramps and your four post. Here's your cylinder where you'll be connecting your cables and your hydraulic lines. It's very important on the very end of this cylinder that you secure this block on down to the top of this threaded rod. So make sure that this nut is run all the way down so this is tight against the rod. That's a very important factor. And there's your hydraulic hose and the fitting that we'll show you. We'll go on to the pump. And here are your pulleys where your cables will run. And then we'll come over. Here are three plastic drip pans that will set uh, to keep the oil from running down onto the car below. There's your cables that you'll adjust to pull the uh, ramps up and down, pull the runners up and down. Your hydraulic motor. This particular <coughs> motor is 110 volt, so it already comes with a plug on it. All you have to do is plug it in. And next to this is your jack tray. Uh, that'll go in between the runways so you can put a bottle jack or jack stands in there and there's a hydraulic hose that we'll use later. Inside of here are your four casters and the framework for those. You'll need those later on uh, to uh, move your lift from side to side. And you have your connecting rods for your release. And uh, next we'll be starting assembly. All right, here's what the lift is going to look like once you get it out of the shipping cradle that it comes in. You have two uprights, you have your long runways, and you have two other uprights, and your cross beam, your bolts, your cables, your trays, your wheels, casters, and your ramps. A couple important things here are the post where your motor is going to go, your hydraulic pump, will have that bracket right there. That's where your pump will mount to. And another important factor is wherever this pump is, it's either going to be left front, driver's side front, or right rear, passenger side rear. That's the location of this beam. And wherever that beam is located is also where this end of the cylinder goes. You have the bottom end and then you have the rod end. And this little bracket on the end of this rod as we told you earlier has to be secured tight against that rod. We're about ready to put the nut on that and lock that down. Uh, now we're ready to actually start assembly of the lift. On this particular lift, the driver's side left front is where the pump is going to go, and that's where this end of the ramp will go. Left side. Right side, no cylinder. Left side, cylinder. Now we've set our front post up and our rear post up, and we put our cross beam in. In the directions, it says to lay the uprights down, slide the cross beam in, and then stand the uprights up. What we like to do is slide the cross beam down, 
till it's on the third notch. Actually, it's the fourth notch from the very bottom. And you have your lock mechanism right here that you'll have to release that so it'll slide down. You want it resting there. That way, when you go to put your runners on, you have uh, enough height where you're not laying, crawling underneath of it. So the important factor here is the safety latch, the pins for that. Your latch will come and stop on each one of these. So you want to be sure that your front and your rear and your side to side is all sitting on the same notch when you put the rest of the lift together. And this is our motor side. Safety latch to the front. And even on all four corners, so you're ready to run your uh, treadway, your runners, and your cables. All right, now we've got uh, our runways on. Our drip pans laying in there. Our jack tray. And we're about to install our safety lever and the safety stops. This is made in several pieces. Uh, assembly is not difficult. Uh, just takes a little bit of time. And in our next shoot, we'll be showing you those installed. All right, here's our lift all assembled. Four post, 7,000 pound parking lift or even some service lift. Uh, an important feature or important technical part of this is when you're putting this lift together, you want to be absolutely sure your measurement from this nut to your cross member is within a quarter inch on all four corners with it resting not on the safety pins. So from this nut to the cross member, whatever that measurement is, you want it to be the same on all four corners when it's not resting on the safety pin. And a good place to start is the post with the hydraulic motor. Whatever that measurement is, bring it over to the other front and then to the back each side on the back whatever that measurement is on that front corner have that on all four within a quarter of an inch so all of your safeties work uh, you can see here that you have the stops on the back to keep the car from roll, rolling off the back you have your stops on the front to keep it from rolling off of the front your oil drip pans and your jack tray those are the pins that we'll show you in just a minute to set it up on the casters. Uh, almost done. And we got a couple hours into it. Alright, here's our lift. It's up on the wheels. You simply raise the platform, pin the wheels in, lower the platform, and it lifts off the ground and then you can push it. It pins in here. All four corners, cantilevers off that. Okay, and now we're just going to push it into place. Okay, you want to be sure all the wheels are facing in the same direction. And push it on over. All right, now raise the lift up so we can remove the wheels.
Now remove the pins and the wheels drop right out. Half ton, extended cab, Dodge Ram, 5.9 motor, two wheel drive. Weighs about 5,500 pounds. Alright, here it is. 12 foot ceiling. We've had some calls on some uh, oil leaks connecting the hoses to the hydraulic pump. When you get the pump, it has a little black fitting on there that almost always you will remove and insert this fitting. It screws into here, there's a little space and an O-ring and then this lock nut. You'll screw it in as far as it will go, run the lock nut down against the O-ring solid. This is part of this and then this fitting is an elbow with a lock nut on it. You'll screw it in, lock the nut down on that, and there's a little O-ring right here, and then this is a taper seat, and if you put all that in there correctly, it should not leak at all for you. I suggest strongly putting a few wraps of Teflon tape around the fitting that screws into this block right here. Maybe three or four wraps, screw it in, make sure it's all solid. That should solve any oil leakage problems. Here's a close-up look at your locking mechanism. This is the left front driver's side front of the car lift. This can be either on the left front driver's side or on the right rear passenger side of the vehicle. You will simply pull this level to the back, pull this lever to the back, it releases that, push your button, lets the lift down. When this is all locked in right, you'll see how it's the pin, the lever is resting on this block. That's about every four inches as you lift it up on this lift. It'll go up four, click into the next one. When you want it to rest on this, you'll raise it up a couple inches higher than what this is and ease it back down onto this. So all four of these blocks are resting on all four of these welded in blocks. And then to release that, you will raise the lift, pull the lever, so it pulls that back and then slowly let the lift down. 